welcome to my channel. Love you guys. Thanks for coming on over today. I hope everyone's having a great day and getting a chance to craft. Um, for me today, I'm going to be working a little bit on my my March 2021 mini junk journal, mini uh, glue book, and that's butterfly themed. So I gave it a little cover and I gave it a name called Butterfly Style. <laughs> and I put a piece of vellum on the front and if you look closely, you can still see I, I did not cover up the words glue book on there. And then, so you can, you can only see it if you're really looking. But I failed to cover that up. So I have that on there forever and a day, March 2021. <laughs> but that's just how it is. I didn't realize what I was doing until after it was always already done. But vellum, wrapped it around, a little napkin, a little stamping, a little lace, and a pretty beautiful butterfly. Yeah. It's cute. I like it. So I've done a few pages already. Let me show you really quick. I made a little pocket here and I'll do a little intro or something right there with a card. But I took a couple images already and did a little bit of gluing on it. Did a little more backgrounding on this. So just a very faint, lovely, whoops, lovely view on that page. So yeah, did uh, did some backgrounds. And uh, what I'm gonna work on today are little, a few more backgrounds. It's a fun little page. I've added some, um, what do they call this? Twine, baker's twine. And beauty to bring you blessing. It's a lot of bees, but anyway. So I'm gonna work on some backgrounds on this today and bring you along for the ride. What I, what I brought out to do that with are my distress inks and some other inks. Um, uh, I also brought out, oh, I have a, a paper plate of all my little words on it. I saw somebody else using lots of words in their journals and I think I need to get rid of some of these. So I brought that out, but I'm not actually gonna work on that today. But my napkins and tissues, this is my scrap bag. I have an entire bin filled with napkins. I have way too many napkins that I don't, haven't used. Who's with me? And I went through my other stuff and uh, pulled out some more background kind of image things that I can use. Some papers that I've had stashed away, um, background papers that um, I've printed out from just some of my painting sessions, my goofing off painting sessions. So I'm just gonna do some backgrounds on that, um, do some inking. And I, what I wanna try with my ink stuff, I'm gonna get a piece of paper for underneath of this. And let me move that, move, let me get a little bit organized here. Let me set things aside here. Do a few things at a time. Okay, set that over there. I would like to use, I don't know how the distress oxides are gonna use with this meth, method that I am thinking about, but I want to use some of my fun colors. of my distress inks. So I have this wilted violet, very pretty. I have this cracked pistachio, um, carved pumpkin, abandoned coral, candied apple, blueprint sketch. Oh, here, this one too. Mermaid Lagoon. Um, Twisted Citron. Oops, and focusing that. And Fossilized Amber. I've got Bundled Sage. This is a, these two are my newest of the two. Of, of all of them, I must say. And then I have Lucky Clover. And the rest are, you know, the, the kinds that back up. There we go. Lucky Clover. Sorry. Uh, the rest are all the distressed colors, um, you know, the vintage type ones. And then all my, all of my, you know, manufactured <laughs> daubers <laughs> up there. But I want to try to use up some of these on a couple pages. I'm going to use these. I want to use some paper. I want to use some tissue. And I'll do several pages 
um, just to work on backgrounds. I wanna use this block and what I'm gonna do is, and it, I'm just kind of playing with the paint and with the backgrounds at this point. I haven't even decided what it, what butterflies I'm gonna use on this. And it, you know, that would be fun, a man in coral maybe, or this card pumpkin on there, but I haven't even finished this as far as doodling on it is concerned because I still wanna, you know, d take some pens to this one. And so I haven't I haven't really given that a whole lot of pre-thought and my latest videos have been all the pre-thinking out pages or pre-arranged. But, you know, I, I can do whatever I want. And uh, I hope that's helped you feel like you can do that too. So I'm just gonna push this around on my, my acrylic block. I'm gonna do a uh, couple colors. Uh, what was this? Ah, uh, where did my head, there we go. So these three colors, uh, carved pumpkin, abandoned coral, and fossilized amber. And I'm just wiping it around a little bit. And then I have a squirt bottle here. Just wet that down. And what's going to happen is it's going to give me a wet page. But um, I do have my heat gun standing by. And I'm going to have to cover up this right here. So I'm going to take my... And this is a really easy way to add color to your page without adding a whole lot of mess or, or strain. And it comes out and gives it a really mellow, mellow looking thing there. Let me add a little, let's see, what was the, I want the coral, the abandoned coral. Give me a little more of that on the page. Just wipe it on the block, get it a little wet, and then just Dab it on. Isn't that pretty? And I've got words and stuff. And just have a have a cloth of some sort standing next to you, so or standing by, so that you can you can do wipe it off really well. And so I did something similar on the other page over here, this green page. So it's going to have a little bit ready for for that. So and. Um, the words on this page I, I don't really like because they're talking to the book was about light and for whatever reason there's information on there about the Dresden bombing and then the focus on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and yeah you see why I tore that book apart <laughs> those were not good days not good days so I'm taking that awful time in history and making something beautiful with it what do you say is that a good idea okay let's add some color to these two pages so I've used those three let's move those aside I'm gonna try this oxide kind of method here the distress oxide now I know that these are activated with water where did my oh there's my lid so I'm gonna do one color at a time with that because I don't know what it's gonna do I don't want to let's see and that's pink, worn lipstick, worn lipstick. So we'll see, this is kind of an experiment to see what happens. It's given me a little bit of color, not much. But if I do something like this and then add water, what, what happens? Give it any kind of a, hmm, where's my, here's my, my dauber. Let's spread it around. I know that these are supposed to be a little more water um, activated. So honestly, that didn't work out really great with the, with the um, acrylic block. All right, not awesome there, but I think I'm going to add another color on top of that pink. Let me dry that off really quick. So I don't have, what about, I don't, bundled sage, let's do pink and green together. Won't that be pretty? I think those two colors would go nice together for a background, especially of some sort of butterfly um, type of thing. 
Okay, that's pretty good. And this I will use the, the acrylic block for. And you can hardly see it, this is true. So it makes me wonder if I've got much ink in this thing. I can kind of see it on there, really vague. But it is a light color to begin with. Okay, we're gonna move on to forest moss. Forest moss. There, hello. Now we're talking. Okay, let's see what this does. Let's let it move around a little bit on here. And boom. Might just turn it to mud. Be prepared. Okay, not awful. Try to get some over on this edge. Meh. What am I looking at? Okay, so hmm, not awful, but I like to experiment every now and then just to see if I can come up with something new and exciting. I like those colors together. With the white paint on the background, I think it's a white gesso that I used. It's kind of got a um, almost a resist and, and on top of the regular paper it looks very it looks very vibrant the inks do but not on top of the white gessoed um, paint so that's an interesting thing to learn I may as well do that with the other side too because this could be a double page spread no reason why I can't but I'm going to I guess I have to do the same method from from the previous page. So let me just keep, let me do this really quick. Did a little of this, which didn't do much. Added a little of this and did wet. What else? Where's my, okay. And then I lose things. No, that's not the pink, the one I was using. There it is, flying around. I'll just daub it on there. Okay, interesting. Put that back in my bin, cover that up, and we did try the bundled stage, so if I'm gonna do the same thing, may as well be consistent. Again, hardly even showing up. And then come back, ooh, wow. Ooh, I should probably protect that page too now that I'm oh boy there we go that's enough that should do it okay here we go let that move around a little bit oh wow yeah that is pretty though with that white and I thought I'd turn a little more to mud but I like how it's how it's looking okay Wipe off of this, and we're good. Okay, let's dry those for a little bit. And then, covering up my lids, always covering them up. I live in a very dry climate, so I need to make sure everything always gets covered up when I'm done using it. And as far as I can tell, tacky glue, if I don't use it up, this stuff just doesn't work because of where I live, things dry up too fast. Um, yeah, lack of humidity in my, my neck of the woods. So I have problems with things drying up on me too fast. Um, goes for glue. I had an entire container of um, the, the glitter glue, an entire bottle about, you know, the size of a Fabri-Tac bottle. And I didn't use it for a while and it totally dried. Up. I could not reactivate it no matter what. I had to throw it away. I was really disappointed. So, but I found Fabri-Tac will, will stand the test of time. Okay, I want to do some purple. What colors? Purple and green. This Twisted Citron, these two would be good. Should I throw in the Candied Apple? Oh, that would be so fun. What about something with those? Me thinking ahead a little bit. Why, why, why think ahead now, right? Um, I don't know what's going to happen to it. Got some 
What about my card? Something with that. That might work. It's got a bird. I don't know. Oh, could you do something on from the inside? Oh, oh and those colors. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, anyway, so let's find a page. It's not totally dry, but it's good enough. Um, how about this one right here? Let's put this behind it. And this. And then, like, go a little bit here, like maybe in three different spots. We'll see what happens. And then, get it wet. All right, I'm not so sure about that twisted citron, but we'll see. That's turning out pretty good. Let's add a little bit more of that green, the twisted citron. Maybe move it around a little. See if I can get it any closer to the edge over here. Looks good. I like it. Wipe off this. Now, do you're not seeing much color here, so I'm gonna pull it up a little. So it's just got enough, just enough color, I think. Maybe a little more on this edge, but I think I will just pull the purple. Maybe just do a little on the edge, just. And for these glue books, background color is not a necessity. It's just something I like to play with, just a little bit. Because I get stuck um, in my creativity sometimes, and I just have to have to dabble. Have to dabble. So, okay, so I used these three. And let's dry it a little bit. And then I think I'll try, since the Distress Oxide didn't really work with the pink, I'm going to skip the blue. But let's put a, make a green page with uh, the Twisted Citron, the Cracked Pistachio, and the Lucky Culver and see what comes up out of that. Yeah, okay, let me go towards the front. Towards the front. See, that turned out really pretty. That looks good. Do this page. All right. Okay, so again, the Twisted Citron. In a couple different places on the board, on the block here. Again, you can hardly see it. And this makes me wonder how much is in these. <laughs> I haven't used them in a little bit. Lucky Clover has a little bluish tint to it. Let's see. I don't know about that cracked pistachio. That might be a little bit off as far as any ink in there, it dried up. Wow, there's not much anything on that page. Hold on a sec, let me go back and get a little more, I guess the only green that's working, I'll add the forest moss, I guess, add some of that. Hopefully it won't look like mud when I'm done. Green mud, that wouldn't work. Oh, there you go. There we go. There's some color now. So I'm, I am a little sad about my greens not being very green anymore. Okay. Okay, so let that dry a little bit. I didn't do any blueprint sketch, but that's okay. So let me set those aside and I will do next I think I'll just do some some napkin stuff and uh, I keep all of my distress inks and my inks in one drawer in my rolling cart 
And if I get too many inks and they don't fit, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but honestly, I don't, I don't do this a whole lot. So, but I will keep this for gluing. I do have my phone book, but I will keep this for gluing. Let's get some tissue. So let's find some blank, blank pages. Here's a blank. I've got this pretty stuff. I love this one. So, and I did one page already using it in here somewhere. Um, that's a different napkin. I like that napkin too. Make sure it's not right next to it. Well, I guess I did use this, it's right here. Just a little bit, but it's okay. I'll, use, I'll just glue a bunch on here and just see where it lands. I can move my water. So, I need to have something back here, please, because the page is shorter. Oh, I have to say, though, that it's a beautiful spring-like day in Laramie, Wyoming. My husband and I went up to um, the mountain, up to uh, the Snowy Range today. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Uh, it's just our local mountain range. And just to see, you know, where the snow line is and to visit this new restaurant that our friends are um, putting together in Centennial. And, uh, they're, and uh, they have coffee and pastries. And he's a chef out of Washington. And, and they're just... It's it's just fun to see people getting back to real life again. <laughs> so we went up there and uh, just had a had a really nice little drive in the country and and uh, it's a beautiful day and we went all the way up to the top of the mountain where you know the end of this end of the maintenance goes and there was nearly a mile a mile of trucks and toy haulers all along the road and snowmobiling. People are snowmobiling up there like crazy right now. And uh, wow, and what a beautiful day. We don't have a snowmobile, but if we did, this would be the perfect kind of day to go do that. So I took a picture and I sent it to my brother in Wisconsin who, who uh, used to work on snowmobiles and, and one of his favorite things to do was to, was to go snowmobiling in the winter. And so he's like, that's a lot of money in those, in those toys. It's like, yeah, a lot of money. Cause you think about it, you got a truck that's a four wheel drive. That's, um, anyway, a truck that's four wheel drive and that a truck alone is, you know, what, 20 grand. <laughs> at least and then you've got the toy hauler which is another 20 grand let me look here blue that's just kind of fun and uh so and then you got the snowmobiles themselves so you're looking at Looking at quite quite a chunk of change for having some wintertime fun in Wyoming. So, but anyway, it was a nice day for a drive, and we went up and got some coffee and pastry at the at the little cafe he's starting. And so, maybe I'll do. No, I've tried that. But yeah, definitely want to go up there again. And I hope everybody else down here, down in the rest of the states are enjoying this beautiful weather. I hope you're having sunshine. I know in Oregon where we used to live, things are starting to bloom. So I appreciate the pictures that people are putting on from, from where I used to live of the beautiful, beautiful spring-like conditions. I know Oregon is beautiful in the spring and the fall and pretty much the summer and so, missed that a little bit. In my original video here introducing this book, I told you I will not be seeing a butterfly anytime soon. So, I'm okay with that. We still have some beautiful weather here. 
Okay, so there's a couple pages of the tissue. Just plain old putting it on there. I like how it's falling off the sides a little bit too. That's fun. That'll give it a nice fluff to it when it's, you know, come and done at the end. Fun on the edge. So now let's take the couple pages of um, printed stuff. And do a little measuring. Got my, I'm gonna tear and I have a pencil somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Nope. I'm gonna use this regular old Dixon Ticonderoga. So right about, if I do this here. And how long, how wide is this? Get it there. So let's tear it first. And not being too careful at all, I mean, it is, after all, a junk journal. And uh, made from scraps and other things, paper recycling, beautification. Let's get this and then I'll get the white edge off. And use that for something else, always, right? Actually, I need to cut this, so let's get this a smidge here because that is just too narrow to rip. Okay. And watch me throw two pieces of scraps in the dustbin. There we go. And for this, I think I'll use my double-sided tape. So lots of different ways to glue things on here, you guys. My original set of double-sided tape, I wasn't sure if I was going to use double-sided tape very often, so I originally bought some at the Dollar Tree a while back, and I found that I used it quite a bit, so I ended up getting a, a multi-pack off of Amazon. Um, and I just used, I just got the one size, I think it's a quarter inch of that. It's a quarter inch, and I know there's thinner. The red, the red kind is quite, quite thin. So you can use that or other, there's wider too, if you wanna make washi tape out of it or use it to create like fabric strips. Let's see, the trick with this is getting one side on first and then going out there right yeah that actually is a really good cut so I like that and let's find another page make sure let's get right side up here so oh okay <laughs> get right side up um pretty painted there let's do something here now this is plain I think I'll maybe do something on this side though with this Maybe get something, get the dark on here. Let me put a bright flower on that. Let me cut this edge off just so I can have a little easier way to, to judge it when I am measuring. Get that white off there. Okay, might as well do this side too. I really like my knife. Walmart came in two packs. I really like that though, the way it holds. It holds really nice, good ergonomic leader crew. So, cut that and this way. Let me see, where are my lines again? Okay, so, 
quite on the line there. Mostly straight here. Looks good. Yeah, this is just a paint. Oh, not quite off. A little bit short, but that's okay. This was a painted paper that I did, and I printed it out on a test, a printer reset type of paper, <laughs> and uh, it just just to test out how my printer would print my downloaded uh, scans um, and honestly I'm a little disappointed so it'll it's still pretty and I, I don't mind the colors of it but it wasn't it doesn't look like what I painted at all so we'll, we'll use it in any use it anyway right if I didn't know what my original looked like it would still be pretty and you'd be like oh wow cool but I know what the original looks like and it's much more vibrant than what this printed out to be so but I use it in something else already. I don't know what else to do with my printer, so I'm just gonna be as is. I should have figured out something to do with all of these. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's the right setup, right setup. So I use that one, that one, and I'm gonna use, I've got these scraps. What can I do with these scraps? I guess I'll wait on the little things because that, that could be something that goes around a picture or to border something. But I have this, this is fun. I've got this in a scrap pack that was um, in Walmart and it was just, uh, you can tell that the that the um, they printed these papers off and they didn't print quite right. So I don't know what's wrong with this one though. This one's fine, but it's got a cool texture. And this one has lines going on it, but the lines all went crooked. So, you know, obviously that, that, was, that was a fail on the printer part. This was a fail. <laughs> this is overlap goofy, but this side is beautiful. So see how badly that overlapped. So these are just like cast offs from bad printouts on, um, wow, that's really bright. Bad, bad printouts from cast off printing. I like that. So that's just, that's about the right size. I'm not even gonna cut it too much. And so let's see. Well, I am looking forward to, oh, yeah, very fibrous too. This is like the handmade type. It's really thick. Some of these are, it's really pretty paper. And I'll double side that. And we are gonna be all set for backgrounds on this. And I'll get going on uh, getting some combinations together and get some pre thought out butterfly pages um, to do for you on camera. But I also have, I like my time too when it's just going through my stuff. And uh, somebody I was watching, part of the process that they like during this, during gluing is, is the digging. Um, so she, oh gosh, who was I watching? Who was I watching? Was it? Your last cut glue, it might be her, um, but she likes to dig for her stuff. That's part of the process of her enjoyment. That what that gives her value, and she organizes her glue book items by size, which actually makes a lot of sense. So if you have animals. She does a little bit of the surreal stuff too. If you have animals that are a certain size and you want heads to be smallish too. So you kind of put things in 
uh, according to size. Like these would be, this size would be one bin and then you'd have your smaller sizes to be in another bin of whatever you're working on in all, all of her images. And I mean, she does a lot of fussy cutting. See now these three, all these items could be a really cool page as well. You know, maybe surrounding an image, surrounding an image. So, okay, so I've got several pages, just, you know, some sort of background on them. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the rest of them as I go through, but uh, it's pretty vibrant. Ooh, what do you think? That's kind of fun. It's a lot of blue, though. Anyway, I'll, I'll keep figuring things out. And I'm definitely, like I said, I've got all these words too. And I definitely want to get some words on these pages more so than what I've done in the past. And, uh, and I've got a, I've got a drawer full of words. Yeah. And it's a rolling cart drawer, a 12 by 12 rolling cart drawer full of words. You guys, that's a lot. So anyway, yeah, let's take a look here and look at all these fibers coming out the edge. That's fun. So... I do, actually, that turned out pretty good. I do like that. And that might go good with a vintage kind of, uh, maybe, I don't know. So much to look at and so much to think about. Now that's a, that's peeking through, but got a, a lot to do in here, but it's fun. I enjoy it, I enjoy it so, so much. I might add a few things in the back for backgrounds back here. But okay, um, so there you got it, you guys, some backgrounds, and I, it's already flopping open. So it, there's gonna have to be some sort of a closure here. I need closure. Ha. Okay, you guys, that's it for today. Love you guys, and I hope everyone is doing well and getting a chance to craft. So um, be creative, figure out what's, what gives you in value intrinsically. If I can say that, um, and uh, I hope you're all happy and joyful and getting your butterfly style on. Okay, you guys, take care. We'll see you in the next video. Love you. Bye-bye.